For this project, I'm back experimenting making soft plastic worms. This time I'm experimenting with some different modeling and molding techniques to see if I can up my production rate and produce a multi-bait mold. My name's Paul Adams, welcome to The Handmade Fisherman. I'm just kneading up some polymer clay. This is something I haven't used for a long time. It's kind of a craft product that's also used by kind of professional sculptors, but it's easy to get hold of and relatively cheap. And it's also very easy to use. This is kind of softened up now, and I'm gonna basically make some worms. Making worms from clay is something they probably teach you at day one at preschool. But I needed to add a little bit of backbone to the worms for this project. So I cut them open lengthways and then snipped down a welding rod into short pieces. These could be pushed into the worms and then rolled up. After trimming off the messy ends, I also added a little bit of a taper to the worms by rocking them backwards and forwards. To add some texture, I cut the ends off a comb and rolled on some ribs using the wider spacing on some and the finer on others. For some of the others, I thought I'd experiment with something I bought online late one night. Apparently, tentacle texturing tools are an actual thing, if not a bit difficult to say. These are ribbed plastic plates of different grades, designed for creature or fantasy sculptors, and they do make great ribs. When I got together enough worms, I rolled out a thicker cylinder and then flattened it with a ruler. This needed to be large enough so I could fit three worms along one side with some space between. Then I put the lot on an oven proof dish and banged it in the oven for 20 minutes at roughly about 110 degrees C. This cures or hardens the soft plastic. When everything was cooled, I drilled three holes on both sides of my flattened cylinder. Then trimmed down the wire on the end of my worms, leaving one end that I could super glue into this main block. Once I had all six worms in place, I got the Lego out to make a mold box. This needed to be slightly larger than my mess of worms. I then filled this with modeling clay, rolled it flat and sliced off any excess. To get my worms in, I took an impression and then with a clay tool, made some shallow scrapes to make it easier to fit them in. I pushed the worms into the halfway point and then came the fiddly bit, which was pushing the modeling clay back against the worms to give a nice clean seam line. What took most of the time was tidying up the ribs to give that clean joint. I added some dimples that will help the mold lock together later. I built up another layer of Lego and with some Vaseline gave everything a good coat, finally making sure I took any excess off the worms. Then I was ready to pour one side of the mold. For this mold, I'm gonna be using this polyurethane plastic. This comes as a two-part liquid that you just mix together. I'm using the commonest variety of this, which is called Easy Flow 60, something that's readily available on eBay from lots of different companies and manufacturers. Normally this would be mixed together on a one-to-one -one ratio and set rapidly into a rigid plastic, the kind of thing that skate wheels are made of. On the downside, this material is not incredibly heat resistant and tends to flex if warmed up, which isn't great if I'm gonna be injecting hot soft plastic into it. So I'm gonna add some aluminium powder into the mix, which should make the molds more stable and rigid and also conduct that heat away from the hot soft plastic. I started by measuring out a small amount, five milliliters of part B using a syringe that I'd added to the bottle cap. I put this in a medicine cup and spooned about the same amount of aluminium powder into another. At this point I realized I probably should have put some gloves on and then I mixed the two parts together. I also added five mils of part A and mixed that up for about a minute before pouring it onto the worms. To prevent any air getting trapped on the surface of the mold, I ran it round until it began to gel. Then I did a couple more batches to thicken it up. As a further experiment, I added a little bit of aluminium kitchen trim and just let that sink in a little. This was something that had been hanging around the shop and I cut it down on the bandsaw and took the little wings off it before drilling some holes on one side. This is so the resin would grip it. Hopefully this will add some support to the resin, 
but I'm not sure if it needs it. I left the resin for a couple of hours to harden up and then came that painful task of getting rid of all that modelling clay, especially picking all the bits out of the ribs. I also scraped the sides with a craft knife blade to get rid of any notches from the Lego brick joints and then built up a new Lego mould box around it before getting out the Vaseline again and giving everything a good coat. To add an injection chamber, I super glued on a short piece of 15mm copper onto that central piece and then poured on some resin and aluminium mix repeating that same pattern of letting it run round before adding some more. I did use about a third more resin on this side as I didn't want to add any more kitchen trim just to see how the plastic mix would compare. Again with a couple of hours for curing I broke off the Lego and scraped down the edges to expose the seam. I pushed a thin blade in as a wedge and it began to split. Surprisingly, it didn't take much just to pop open. The worms also came out pretty easily and I cleaned up the bottom of the injection tube and checked to see if it all went back together okay. Finally, I filed some small air vents at the end of every worm and the mould was good to go. The exciting the exciting but I'm just remelting some soft plastic in the microwave I'm out in the I suppose what's the washroom this is a tumble dryer uh, just because it's on the back of the house and I can open the door behind the camera and let a bit of the smell out the molds ready I've put a load of clips on there to hold it together I've made a little plunger this is one from another project which is just a dowel with some masking tape rolled onto it that kind of fits snugly into that spout but it's not completely airtight but I should be able to get enough pressure on it to force any soft plastic into the small holes. So I'm kind of a bit eager to get on with it. I'm going to melt this soft plastic down and get going. Once I got the plastic up to temperature, the pour was pretty straightforward and it felt like the mould was filling almost under gravity. I only applied light pressure with the plunger and left it there for a minute. This is the first one. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. See what it's like. It's had a couple of minutes to cool. These gloves are a pain in the bum. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, you can see that it's still a bit liquid. I've gone a bit early, but they look pretty good. <laughs> Too early though. I should have left it probably three minutes. I did get a bit carried away in the washroom last night making worms, but this mould is so easy to use, even with those useless gloves. But once I got the worms out, cleaning it out and setting it up again was just so quick and simple. And the worms themselves have really come out with all that detail. I think the time I spent cleaning up the seam has really paid off. Just comparing the sides of the mould, the, the unreinforced side does have a little bit of flex, which gets a bit more when it's warm. Um, but the other side is absolutely locked solid with that aluminium in. I think I need a bit of spinach to bend that. So I think that's something I'm going to use in future projects. These worms are great because they're a very basic and simple shape to experiment with materials and mold making, but I think I'm, I'm almost done with them. And I'm gonna be moving on to something a little more complicated. At the end of the last video, I asked for your suggestions as to what I should make. And probably the biggest response was for creature baits and lizards in particular. So I've kind of started a little bit of sculpting, a little bit of experimenting for hopefully the next project. But the main reason for producing this mold was so I can make a lot of baits and give them away as a bit of a thank you to my patrons. These are people who support this channel on Patreon, which is a crowdfunding site. They pledge an amount per video and it really does go a long way to keeping this channel running. So if you like what I do here and you'd like to support this channel and maybe get involved in future giveaways, then please consider joining us on Patreon. You can start with a donation as little as a dollar per video and also set yourself a monthly maximum so you know where you're up to. 
I still have an awful lot of worms to make and a lizard to finish. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Thank you.